All right, everybody, there are some things Disney doesn't want me to tell you, and I'm pulling back the curtain on eight of those tips. Let's get started. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. And if you've ever attempted to research a Disney Parks vacation, you know there's no shortage of official and unofficial info out there to help you with everything from ticket advice to tips for the best bathrooms. By the way, we have videos about the best bathrooms if you wanna go check those out. Now, I am gonna give you a bunch of great tips today, so if you don't wanna write them all down, you can go ahead over to disneyfoodblog.com slash don't tell Disney, and we will get you a free PDF with all of this information I'm gonna have in this video today. All you have to do is sign up for our newsletter, um, completely free DFB newsletter, and we will get the PDF right to your inbox. So that's disneyfoodblog.com slash don't tell Disney. But even with all of those tips, there are some things that Disney does not want me to tell you. So I'm going to let you know what those things are. First up, you should never pay rack rate for your hotel. Rack rate, by the way, is the flat full price for a Disney Resort hotel room. And we're telling you right now, never pay the rack rate. You don't have to. Discounts are available from Disney and through third-party sites, and the full price is almost never the price you have to pay to book your resort. So dig around, check Disney's official special offers tab, discounts on DisneyWorld.com, do some research on third-party sites to see if you can score a discount. Typical discounts range from 10 to 20% or more. Sometimes there's 30, even 40% discounts. So if the rack rate gives you sticker shock, keep checking for ways to save. And a great way to avoid paying rack rate at a resort with DVC accommodations, that's Disney Vacation Club accommodations, which is Disney's timeshare program, you can rent DVC points to score a good deal on deluxe rooms that have multiple bedrooms, multiple bathrooms, and are just bigger rooms in general. So you can do that through a handful of third parties. And while most do require some planning, you're more likely to get your first choice if you plan six months in advance or more. You can save a ton of money on deluxe rack room rates, especially for those DVC villas. Definitely look into that if you're looking for a deluxe but don't want to pay those full prices. Next thing Disney doesn't want me to tell you, value resorts have the same perks as moderate resorts. So we know the appeal of deluxe and moderate resorts is extensive. They often have unique and lovely theming. They might sleep a fifth guest, which is good for families. They're known for quality and they're often smaller, so you get that more intimate feel. But if you only need a resort as a place to rest your head after going rope drop to the kiss goodnight, you can usually save a lot of money at a value resort on Disney World property. Now, these resorts offer the same basic amenities, pools, playgrounds, airline check-in, gift shops, dining, and that Disney service we all know and love. The theming tends to be a little over the top at value resorts, but again, if you're not hanging out at the resort, it doesn't really matter if there's a giant Dalmatian in front of your hotel room, right? And if you have little kids, they are gonna love the theming at the value resorts. Now, the biggest difference between a value and a moderate resort besides the pricing might be the dining situation because value resorts only offer food courts. Every once in a while you'll see a private dining situation at a value resort as well. And we love a food court for basic eats and our morning coffee. They're functional, but if you do want some more dining options right at your resort, you might want to make that leap to moderate or even deluxe. Remember, you can dine at any resort in any hotel in Disney World, even if you're not staying there. Always remember you can go visit and eat at any Disney resort even if you're not staying there. So that's a great way to check out locations for future stays. But when it comes to package delivery, extra magic hours, free transportation, everything that the deluxe and moderate resorts offer as those perks are also available to value resort guests. So save the money, stay at a value resort, and you get all the same perks like package delivery and extra magic hours that you get at moderate and deluxe resorts. Also, since we're talking about this, do remember that Art of Animation Resort and All Star Music do have family suites as well. So if you have a larger family, you need a dedicated one bedroom suite, you can get those at the value level. So those are gonna cost a little bit less than you would pay for the same amount of room at a deluxe resort. 
Next thing Disney doesn't want me to tell you, anyone can order off the kids menu. Now we all know that Disney goes above and beyond to make dining of all kinds irresistible at both the parks and resorts. But here's a tip you can use to save money and avoid wasting food if portions are too big for you. Anyone can order off the counter service kids menus. At quick service locations, we've never encountered an issue ordering from the kids menu. Doing so can save you money of course, but on top of that, the portions might be more in line with what you're able or willing to consume, so you won't be tossing out a bunch of uneaten food. I find this all the time. When I go to a counter service restaurant and I want some chicken nuggets, I will often order the kids chicken nuggets, which means I get four chicken nuggets and french fries and a drink, and that's plenty of food usually for that meal. Now at table service, your mileage might vary a bit with the kids menu. It does note specifically that it's for kids nine and under, and in some cases you'll be able to just order straight off the kids menu with no adjustments, but other times you might be given the option of a larger portion of the kids menu item at a full adult meal price. So this trick is also helpful if you have picky grown-ups in your group. Keep it in mind, don't be afraid to speak up if you see something on the kids menu that you'd like to order. Next thing Disney might not want me to tell you is that you can buy your fuel rod ahead of time and save money. So fuel rods are reusable chargers for your electronic devices, and you can find machines to purchase them all over Walt Disney World. Once you buy one, you can swap out your fuel rod for a freshly charged one at any of the machines as often as you need. Now, if you plan to use your phone to take photos, look up wait times, search for fast passes, submit mobile order, you might find that your battery dies quickly in the parks, even if you never have an issue with battery life in the real world. We love how convenient fuel rods are, and if you don't think you'll have time to charge your charger throughout the day at the park so you forget yours at home, <clears throat> they're a great option. But Disney doesn't want you to know that you can actually buy fuel rods online before your trip and save some money. Fuel rods start at just over $20 on fuel-rod.com, but in the parks you'll pay $30 for the starter kit. Even after shipping your fuel rod, you'll come out ahead about $5. So that sounds like Mickey ice cream bar money to us. Also note that you can get your fuel rod ahead of time at malls and airports and other locations. So if you happen to be strolling through the mall and you know you have a Disney trip coming up soon, get your fuel rod there and you can use it at Disney World. Next thing Disney might not want me to tell you is that Shop Disney sells in-park merch. Right, so Disney for sure makes it easy to drop some dollar bills on souvenirs. And if you're traveling with kids, it's even harder to stick to a souvenir budget. So that's where Shop Disney comes in. More and more, ShopDisney.com is carrying favorites from the parks, even dropping things like Color Trend merch the same day it's made available in park stores when it's selling out. Even better, Shop Disney has sales that the stores in the parks don't, so you can sometimes score a deal on the same items you'd find in the parks if you buy them ahead of time on Shop Disney. So look for those, I think they have two twice a year sales that are super, super great. So you wanna check for those specifically. So use this strategy to make your kiddos smile with special souvenirs that don't break the bank in the parks and purchase those presents ahead of time. Pack them for when you arrive on vacation. Next thing Disney doesn't want me to tell you, you can get discounts on in-store snacks. So if you've got a hankering for a snack or a bottled drink while you're in the parks, if you have an annual pass or are a cast member or a Disney Vacation Club member, you can make your purchases in retail locations and get your discount. One of my favorite tips here is that Caramel Kucha, which is in Germany and sells those awesome caramel snacks, is actually considered a retail location. So you can actually buy those things at a discount with your annual pass, Disney Vacation Club or cast member discounts, awesome. So snack and drink kiosks don't accept these discounts, so you really save some money over the course of your vacation if you grab your bottled drinks and your packaged snacks and a few other types of snacks in places like Caramel Kucha over at those um, merchandise locations instead. Next thing Disney does not want me to tell you, you don't need to go back to Disney World every year. Now, I know there's a lot of controversy about this out there, I'm sure, but there are always new attractions and restaurants opening in the parks. You can't do everything in a single trip, and sure, there will always be things you want to go back for, but what Disney doesn't want you to know is that you don't have to go back year after year. Disney parks are always changing. There will always be something new, but here's the thing about new. When the shiny newness wears off, it's typically less crowded and easier to enjoy. So don't buy into the hype that you have to go the first days or months of a new attraction or land looking at you, Galaxy's Edge. If you can wait, you might encounter shorter lines and lighter crowds, and you might even get to enjoy the full land rather than just part of it, as is the case of Phase 1 and Phase 2 openings like Galaxy's Edge and Avengers Campus. 
So plan your Disney parks trips when time and budget allow. And think about this. If you pool your trips and save over a longer period of time, you can potentially take a longer trip, allowing you more flexibility and the chance to take in more of the parks while you're there. So plan smart, guys. Um, you don't have to go back every year and you might be able to save a little bit of money by going every other year instead and still be able to enjoy all the same attractions. And the last thing Disney does not want me to tell you, you only have to buy one annual pass to get perks for the whole family. This is the tip we give a lot here on DFB Guide, um, because I think it's important. Annual passes are way expensive. They can be over a thousand dollars. And so if you want to save money on your hotel with annual pass discounts, on your food with annual pass discounts, you want to get tables in Wonderland um, so you can save 20% on all your food and beverage in Disney World at participating locations, you can get all of that stuff with just one annual pass. You don't have to get a pass for every member of your family. So crunch those numbers. Look into how much an annual pass costs. And if you can also stretch your annual pass off over two Disney World trips. So if you do go every year and you get one annual pass, just go one week earlier next year and you can use your annual pass discounts for both trips. So that's a really great tip. So you don't have to buy annual passes for your whole family, just one person, and they still get all of those perks and all of those discounts. All right, so there's a bunch of things that Disney does not want me to tell you. I hope you've benefited from them. If you guys want this in a PDF for you, you can head over to DisneyFoodBlog.com slash Don't Tell Disney, and we will get a PDF to you. You just have to sign up for our completely free newsletter, and then we'll send this PDF right to your inbox with all of these tips from today's video, so you don't have to write them all down. So head over to DisneyFoodBlog.com slash Don't Tell Disney, and uh, we'll get all these tips right over to you. Thanks for listening, you guys, and thanks for watching. This is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.